All right, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about Flashpoint, a really important property for lubricants, especially as regards to the safety of using lubricant. Now, the actual definition of Flashpoint that we're trying to get is to the lowest temperature of a liquid at which its vapors will form a combustible mixture with air. All right, a lot of words. What does that actually mean? So let's say that I've got a, a pool of lubricant that's just, I don't know, it's been dropped on the floor, it's been spilt. Some of that is going to kind of evaporate into the air around it. Now that's dependent on the vapor pressure, if you'll remember from high school physics and chemistry. And the vapor pressure is dependent on the temperature of the fluid as well as things like the ambient atmospheric pressure as well. So what's gonna happen is as this kind of volatilizes out, we're gonna end up with this vapor cloud, if you like, forming above that little puddle. And that's full of, you know, vapors of the lubricant. Now at some point, if I induce a spark or a flame or something like that, well, that can then go up in flames. And we would say that that lubricant has reached its flash point. So that's basically all we mean. Now, this puddle on the ground is not exactly how we would typically use lubricants, right? I mean, most of the time it's in an enclosed space, whether that's in a reservoir or whether that's in an application, maybe it's a gearbox or a turbine or it's a thermal system, whatever it is, it's usually enclosed. And so in order to try and kind of simulate what Flashpoint would be like in a real world scenario, um, we've come up with a whole bunch of different test methods for how to test Flashpoint. So I'm gonna go through a few of the main ones and talk about how they kind of relate to each other. So usually we distinguish between two different types. There's open cup and closed cup tests, and it'll become very obvious. So ASTM D92 is the standard open cup test. And what that means is that you take a vessel, which is open to atmosphere, so it doesn't have a lid on it or anything, and you fill it with lubricant, right? You put a hot plate underneath, and as you heat up the hot plate, you try to induce a flame. Right, so you put a spark into the vapors or something like that and you try and ignite it. Now, if at that temperature nothing happens, well then you increase the temperature of the lubricant and then you try again. And if you get a flash, well then that is the flash point of your lubricant. Right, so a very easy test. So that is ASTM D92. Now, that's, you know, a pretty standard way of testing it. It has some, I guess, risks in the laboratory because you're allowing you know, an open vessel with vapors and you're trying to induce a flame or a, a, a effectively a controlled ex, a mini explosion. And so the industry tended to move away from open cup tests to what we call closed cup tests. Now the typical closed cup test is ASTM D93. Very similar setup, except this time we've got a lid on top, right? So it's a sealed vessel. And again, we increase the temperature of the hot plate and the lubricant. We try to put a spark into the system. If nothing happens, we increase the temperature again. And of course, if we get a flame, well, hey, that's the flash point of the lubricant. Now, the flash point here that we measure is going to be a little bit different to the open cup version, right? Because it's a closed system. So uh, the vapors aren't venting to atmosphere. You know, we're gonna seal in that pressure. So that changes the flash point. Now there's another closed cup test, which is very common, which is ASTM D6450. And this one is a little bit different because again, similar setup, we've got a lid, uh, uh, an enclosed vessel. Um, now typically I think it's like one and a half mil of lubricant and like three mil of air or something like that. It's quite a, a small system, but we heat up the lubricant and then we try and induce a, an arc. If nothing happens, this is the difference we then put some oxygen into the system and vent some oxygen out of the system. So we're kind of replacing the air. And that means that we're removing a lot of the kind of light end vapors with it. So then we try again, we heat everything up, we try again, and if we get a flame, then we say that that is the flash point of the lubricant. Now, when I say, you know, we have a flame, how can you tell that there's a flame inside if it's a completely enclosed system. Um, so the way that they would do it is they would measure a pressure change inside the vessel. So they've got a, a pressure gauge, and if they see a little, incre a slight increase in pressure, that corresponds to kind of like a, a flame front on the inside. All right, so that's three different ways that we can measure Flashpoint. But the one thing that you'll notice about Flashpoint um, is that it's not really a physical property of the lubricant. 
And what do I mean by that? I'm putting a bunch of words up and this is specifically from the ASTM D6450 text. And it's not actually a physical property in the sense that the viscosity is like a known quantity and we have different methods to measure what the true viscosity of the oil is. Flashpoint though, is completely dependent on the test method that you're using. So there is no real flash point of the lubricant and we are, a, we are doing our best to uh, make test methods more accurate so that we can measure that specific value. The flash point is actually determined by the test method. And so that's why the different tests, D92, D93, 6450, don't really correlate very well with each other. So it's important when you're doing flashpoint testing that you're looking at the trend. So is the trend, generally the flashpoint of a lubricant is uh, you're concerned when it goes down, right? Because it's, a, it's a, a safety concern. And so you're looking at the trend. You're not necessarily looking at the absolute number because the absolute number might not really mean anything. So what does it mean in practice? How does the flashpoint change as the lubricant kind of decomposes? Well, I put up this chart in the last video where we talked a little about about um, weight distributions within a lubricant. So within a group one, you've got a whole bunch of stuff um, that might be, you know, at the heavy end, right? So up at the uh, top end of increasing weight. And then we've got a whole bunch of light ends, if you like. This is very important in thermal systems, for example. Do we have a lot of light ends that could potentially flash? Well, what will typically happen, and we showed this in the previous video, is that over time, as lubricant kind of volatilizes off, so as it evaporates, the light ends will start to disappear and the distribution will kind of shift to the right, right? So this will happen a lot more in a group one than it would in a PAO because there are a lot more light ends in a group one. So over time, it kind of shifts. And ultimately what happens is that the viscosity of the lubricant also shifts to a higher value, right? So that's typically what you might see. However, at very high temperatures, the reverse can happen, right? In actual fact, what can happen is that you end up with a lot more light molecules and you end up with a lower viscosity oil. Now, why would that happen? The reason why that would happen is because although you do have light ends volatilizing off, in a closed system, they might not have anywhere to go. There might not be a vent. And the other thing is that thermal cracking can occur. And this is when molecules are literally broken into smaller molecules, right? So thus reducing the overall average molecular weight that you have inside the lube system. So this can cause the viscosity to decrease and it can also cause the flash point to decrease at the same time. So something to watch out for. Anyway, I hope this has been a helpful explanation of the flash point of a lubricant. As usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained. Thanks.